Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to use the method of virtual work to solve for redundant trusses. So we will basically do both calculating the internal forces in the truss as well as calculating the deflection at the point at which the load is being applied. So this course is, or rather this video is part of the MSc 312 in the Mechatronic System School of Engineering in Simon Fraser University. So the first we need to understand how we use the method of virtual work to find deflection of a truss. This can be the deflection along any particular point. So the principle is very simple. The principle of virtual work, what we do is we apply a virtual force to the structure which is in equilibrium to produce internal virtual forces. This is solved basically using the same static principle, either method of sections or method of joints. The virtual force, since it's virtual, we assume it does not produce any additional deformation inside the structure. The internal deformation and the external displacement result in virtual external and internal work. Since the structure is in equilibrium, the total external work must be equal to the total internal work done. So this is the basic principle. So what we do is calculate the work done due to the deformation inside the structure, calculate assuming that the, the virtual force, the, there is a displacement produced along the virtual force. So the uh, total work done by the two things should be equal to each other. And then since we know um, the amount of virtual force here apply, we will be able to calculate the def deflection at the point at which the virtual force is being applied. As an example, we are going to consider this particular system. It's a simpler structure, so we have three joints uh, and then we apply a hundred newton force at this point. The actual calculation is fairly simple, so what we are interested in doing is to actually find the deformation or the deflection of the node 1 uh, along the a 45 degree line. So that's shown by the dashed line over here. So we're going to assume the length of each of the side 1, 3 and 2, 3 is 1 meter. So to see or see this more practically, what we do is we ignore the virtual force and calculate the real internal forces and we'll call this P, e, uh, P sub EI. This is just due to the external force alone. Then we apply a virtual force along the direction in which we are interested in calculating the deflection. And once we do that, we can calculate the corresponding internal forces or internal virtual forces. Uh, this would be easier if we choose PV to be 1 Newton and sometimes it may be useful uh, to make the virtual force equal to the external force. Then we calculate the internal virtual work. For that we calculate the real deflection which is this delta over here or the de real deformation due to the real internal force. This can be given by the internal force over here times the length of the link divided by the area times the Young's modulus. The work this is going to be the virtual work would be the internal virtual force over here times the real deformation and then that expands to this particular formula over here. If AE is constant we can basically bring this out of the integral and then just calculate the sum of this part alone. Equating uh, what we get is so we'll basically have P sub V times the delta along P sub V should be equal to this virtual work over here and then kind of rearranging the terms you'll find that the delta along PV is 1 divided by PV times the sum here, which is the virtual work done by the external virtual force PV. So how do we actually go about doing it? So the first step is to calculate all the internal forces. This can be, as I mentioned, done using method of sections or method of joints. So we're going to do it really quickly using the method of joints. So we take the equilibrium about point 0.1. Taking the x equilibrium, we get this particular equation. Uh, basically, I'm assuming all forces going to the right are positive and all forces going up are positive. And then uh, doing the same thing, we get for y equilibrium, we get this equation. Since we have two unknowns here, we can solve these two and then we find T12 is 100 times root 2. And then T13 is a compressive force of 100. And then all of these are in Newton. Take equilibrium of joint 2 and then we find that T23 needs to be equal to minus 100 newtons. This is fairly straightforward. We do the same thing. What we do is ignore the actual force and then apply a virtual force and then calculate all the internal virtual um, forces. 
So since we are interested in a 45 degree plane, we're going to apply this virtual force over here at a 45 degree plane and then do our calculations. We can once again do the equilibrium about of take J1, take X equilibrium. We get these two equations. Uh, similarly, we can solve the join two and then we'll get one more equation and then we can solve for P sub VI. What we're going to do is kind of create a table. The first is going to be the links, which is one, two, one, three, two, three. Next is going to be the length uh, in meters. This is the internal forces from the external force. This would be P sub EI. This would be the internal, um, excuse me. This needs to, yeah, this would be the internal deflection from the external force. That will be this times the length divided by A times E. And then this would be the internal virtual force resulting from the one Newton that we applied. So we calculated this. So all of these were calculated and then we just fill in this table over here. Once you do this, we can calculate the virtual work for individual elements. And then once we sum all of that, we can get the deflection to be about 58 microns. In class, we actually solved the X and the Y deflection of the point uh, where the load is applied. And then we actually found that we can actually take the components and kind of calculate this deflection, the 45 degree angle as well. And then both of them should result in the same answer. So once again, what did we do? Just to quickly summarize, we are interested in finding the deflection of the point. I'm just going to go back. So we're interested in finding a deflection along this 45 degree line. So the next step is, we can. this is explaining how we find the deflection. Uh, what we do is kind of calculate the equilibrium, calculate the virtual force, sum, and we can calculate the deformation from this formula over here. Next step we're going to do is calculate redundant truss um, or indeterminate structure. We'll see how we'd actually calculate the forces. So this redundant truss, um, this is a diagram. So if you count, you'll notice that this link over here and this link over here is basic. One of that is basically a redundant link, which makes it statically indeterminate. Uh, you can just pause the video at this point and then try to see if you can actually solve this with without considering the redundant link. So we can see if we can apply method of sections or method of joints to get all these forces. You'll notice that perhaps you can solve this region over here, but then when you get to here, you can't actually solve using just the static equation. So hence we need to do something more interesting. So what you're gonna do is um, kind of remove this link and then try to solve this video. This I'm gonna pause.